first look at a new floor plan here from Cougar today, and I'm telling you, they cracked the code and they did that one thing that no other manufacturer has done with this layout that I've ever seen. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bishes RV with the new 25 FKD Cougar. And I think that this is a heads and tails improvement upon their previous 29 FKD front kitchen. It's still a front kitchen super slide with a rear bedroom slide, a king bed slide at that. But what they did here is every manufacturer I've seen who builds a floor plane like this, whether it's Rockwood or Freedom Express or anybody, they almost always build it with like a radius shower just kind of shoved into the corner of a bathroom. And those radius showers don't provide awesome elbow room. Well, the problem is it's kind of hard to throw a rectangular shower in a floor plan like this, or at least it was until Cougar figured out how to do it by basically using a different version of a floor plan that they use successfully in a bunch of their other models. They've been able to bring us a rectangular shower with more elbow room and with their barreled ceiling good headroom and actually surprising space around the toilet and just more space to get dressed and get around in general. Not to mention the fact that the things that they did with their pantry on this, the way the pantry and the um, the entertainment section interact with like a slide open hidden pantry kind of area, you still have awesome storage, but they were able to move the refrigerator so that they could really maximize the kitchen space. And that still allows for room for a full super slide. Now you can choose a booth or a table and chairs, a hide a bed or a theater seat. You have all kinds of options there. You can build this with the standard 220 watt solar package. You can go up to 660 watts of factory solar and even a step in between. We've got a rear bedroom slide. Private rear bedroom is really nice because you're, you're a little bit further away from the foot traffic. So if you're a light sleeper, people who wake up early and their dogs are barking and stuff, it's just less bothersome to you. There's so, so many good things about this one that I I really like it. Zero to 110 degree rated allowances for full time RVing and a partridge in a pear tree. This is a killer kitten right behind us over here. I think it's one of the better versions of this floor plan that I've seen, and they certainly are not the first ones to come out with it. Like, you know, other builders have been making layouts like this for a number of years, but finally getting it down closer to that 30 foot kind of range with all these features, this is a rock star, baby. And before we get started here, I do want to mention the RV that we're looking at. I'm getting one of the very first looks at it ever. This is the first prototype. I have, without a doubt, there will be some things on this that get reworked. So keep in, keep in mind, this is kind of an idea of what this floor plan is, and, and about 99% of it will probably stay there, but don't be surprised when they start hitting dealer's lots if a couple little things tweak and change around here and there. Like I know for a fact they're trying to improve the way the, the sewer hookups are located so they're more accessible. So I'm not even going to get into that this video because all I'll do is disappoint you, and by the time it comes into real life, it'd be better. So, that. And like any RV, this, this RV has some great qualities and it has some potential drawbacks. And just because I'm kind of jazzed about the fact that they've done something I haven't really seen before doesn't mean it's, a, you know, the perfect RV for everybody or the best front kitchen travel trailer that's ever existed. I, I don't know that it necessarily is. I do know that my uh, belly uh, getting shined on by the sun reflecting in that uh, television is not exactly flattering. Uh, that, that's great. Nothing makes you feel like taking a, uh, a little bit of a, uh, you know, having a salad for lunch, like something like that. But hey, neither here nor there. What is good about this one, though, ignoring my reflection, you got the Tootsie Toaster, or, you know, right at toe level. And obviously, your TV is not, well, it's not super far away, and it's not mounted straight up to the ceiling. It is at an ideal location because of what they did, again, uh, with the, uh, the, the the pantry, the entertainment center. The way the kitchen and the living room kind of uh, mix and overlap in this is great. You might have noticed it get a little darker over there. There's actually a motion detecting light right above the entry door. You can just set it to on or off mode, but it's on motion mode currently. So when we walk back over there, it'll light up. It's also a larger oven over here, which is something I like to point out. Um, that's kind of a hard find. Like Rockwood's good about that. Cougar's good about that. But not a lot of brands and travel trailers or, frankly, fifth wheels until you get into those big high dollar luxury jobs are good about giving us uh bigger ovens now they have uh gone with a uh the the slide floor matches the main floor basically this year and it just looks far more seamless it just looks so good to me and they give us fantastic window coverage but Cougar's version of this does not solve for good campsite window coverage. So that's, you know, one of the things where 
This RV has great qualities, but that's not necessarily one of them. The barreled ceiling in here is really nice though because it's a traditional six and a half foot sidewall. That's very industry standard, but it's got a uh, somewhere between like a four, five and a half, something like that inch um, kind of barrel to it, which really opens up the space in here. And there's that motion light going to town once again. Um, the uh, RV does not use heatless flooring, um, but their, their new little heat vents here, a lot of people have been very happy with them. They've done a better job of keeping a lot of junk out of there and allegedly are providing better hot airflow into the RV. I don't know the science behind that, but evidently it was something that they stumbled into accidentally, but that's also how we discovered Silly Putty. So, hey, that's cool. Now, the countertop space in this, you might notice there's a little bit of a level change here. Uh, I think a lot of people would prefer if it was one flat level, but uh, the problem is it's supplier limitations. The, the people who make these countertops can't make one giant piece that shape. So there does have to be a little bit of a level break right there. Not my favorite thing, but it is what it is. Um, there are also, you see those easy reach outlets like right below that window. A lot of the outlets in this RV are inverter prepped, which is cool. Now their cabinetry, the styles and rails are all lumber core pocket screwed. So screws into wood and the doors themselves are all wood. Um, every manufacturer of some kind of front kitchen though has this one little goofy corner corner exchange that is a little bit tricky to kind of navigate but I sort of like what Cougar did here it's um like what would you put up here I'm kind of curious like for me it almost feels a little bit like spice rack or something like that but I'm a little bit curious like exactly what you would put uh up in that space right there the uh you know window covers again on the campsite not fantastic it is worth noting there is a full viewing window with privacy shade installed in the entry door, but uh, they've got that kind of, um, you know, thing over the top of it right now. Our control panel over here also has uh, dimmer switch lighting for our main cabin. That's a neat 2024 thing coming into the Cougar family. They've had that mounted over in their slide box for a while, but uh, bringing dimmable lighting into the main cabin like that, I think is a, uh, a really nice update and change of pace right there. As I mentioned when the video kind of began, you have some choices over here. The booth dinette and a hide -a bed will be standard. And then a theater seat and a table and chairs are optional. And a lot of people, uh, I, I bet they're going to build more theater seats and hide -a beds on this. So a lot of people ask, why don't they just standardize a hide -a bed or a theater seat and make the uh, hide -a bed optional? Well, basically because a hide -a bed and a booth dinette cost less money, so manufacturers like to have options that add money, not subtract. So the cheapest version is always the default uh, in almost any case. There's almost no option subtract money things in the RV industry. So just in case you were ever curious, people who didn't ask, that's the, the why behind the what. You're also going to see uh, as we go through some more details in a, in a little bit here, all the windows that possibly can uh, will have blackout roller shades. Now I mentioned it in that way, because there are some windows like near the, um, uh, the, the the campsite window in the kitchen. It does have to have a, uh, a metallic mini blind because it uh, is too close to a fire source. Now, if you got eagle eyes, you might be looking down at the main entry door and seeing a little bit of light down there. It's because I didn't actually get the door totally closed. That cool little poster they have over the door makes it awful hard to actually grab the door handle and close it behind me. That is a 12 volt compressor fridge, uh, by the way, just in case you're curious. And man, that entertainment center is, like I said, it is right down at optimal head viewing level, whether you're reclined or not. There are some RVs that if you're reclined, it's not so bad. If you're not reclined, it's not exactly the most uh, enjoyable viewing experience. And it's kind of funny when I saw this, I looked at it and I, I, I wiggled it a little bit and I could feel it move somehow. And I, I thought maybe like it was one of those things where it swings open and as I sort of pulled on it, it, it didn't it didn't want to move and I didn't want to break it. And I, I kind of noticed over here, there's uh, it looked like a little silvery thing. I'm like, is that a magnet? So I actually started pulling the entire entertainment center over toward the front of the kitchen. And lo and behold, like the Legend of Zelda, you've got yourself a magical little secret storage stash back there called Stortopia, where you have all kinds of storage glorage. And that TV can pivot around. So if you are just trying to sit at the dinette and watch something, um, you know, you can still have some decent viewing there. Or let's say you've got a grandkid and you're using that as a guest sleeper. You know, they could keep an eye on it. You could, you could turn something on for them to kind of go to sleep to, by the way. Um, now, they did a great job here giving us good drawer space. One of my only knocks on this front kitchen is that the overhead cabinets, uh, you know, above that front windshield 
Um, they don't have any sort of struts to hold themselves open. They are a soft close, which is interesting. And they, I, I will say, because of the curvature of the front end of this RV, they do stick out a little bit. But I would rather personally deal with a little bit of a head bump potential scenario than have zero overhead storage right there. It always feels very ugly and unfinished to me when a manufacturer doesn't do that. Now, obviously, when you get to Booth Dinette, you've gained some bonus storage and some bonus sleeping space. But again, table and chairs is available. Hide-a-bed is available. And you can get mix and match any of those combinations that you want. Hide-a-bed, theater seat, Booth Dinette, table and chairs, whichever you know, poison you choose to pick to tickle your fancy. I, I don't know. What is that? You know what? No, don't answer that. I don't want, I don't want you to answer what tickle your fancy means. I don't think, nope, moving on. I'm gonna, I'm about to get fired. I'm about to get an HR call. This right here is the thing that had me kind of jazzed up. Almost every manufacturer who builds this floor plan will build a hallway right here that goes to the bedroom. Well, what Cougar did is they gave us a walk-through bathroom. Now, some people like that. Some people don't. The benefit of a walk-through bathroom is that you can keep the RV shorter while actually giving it a vastly larger bathroom. One of the other benefits is this right here. It allowed them to get away from the, the same radius corner elbow busting shower that you've seen. So Cougar does have a couple radius showers still in its lineup currently. They've been there for a long time. The fellow that's basically designing Cougar right now, he has heard you. He knows that most people, a lot of people, don't care for those radius showers. Because while you can get the same kind of headroom that you're looking at right here, you cannot get the same kind of elbow room that you get in a rectangular shower. So any floor plan that he's making now is going to have what you're seeing here. It will have a, uh, a rectangular shower, not a radius. So just, again, kind of keep in mind, they do have a few that are still a radius right now, but they will be going away over time. And basically over here in this corner where most manufacturers would have put the shower, Cougar put the toilet. And the thing is, it works like a fox. There's some really good space over there. I was actually overall very happy, very impressed with that. Um, there's also a handy little um, towel hanging bar over here around the corner, just in case you're uh, curious. And that uh, medicine cabinet right there, that opens up for some nice Lipitorge storage. And there's even a big, big, weird shaped wastebasket space down here below the sink. And I'll take weird storage over no storage every day of the week, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, the tankless, sorry, I'm going to slide you back into the bathroom here. Tankless on-demand water heater controls right here. And I never know, should these things be by the kitchen? Should they be by the bathroom? I think by the shower kind of makes the most sense, but I, I don't know that it really matters because I suspect once you get it set how you want it, you're probably not messing with it much uh, anymore. Now this has a big rear bedroom suite, but one of the things I like is just like the main entry door. We do have a, uh, you know, a window in the door, but it does have that privacy shade, so you're not necessarily putting on a free show for the neighbors. And you can deadbolt that door so gas station murder hobo don't come and get you. That is um, important, obviously. Now, uh, let's just be real about this. They are taking a little bit of a page out of Rockwood's book right here with that big rear window and not burying a giant closet on the rear wall. And that's not a bad thing because it keeps the RV like two and a half feet shorter, which also translates into less weight, but thousands of less dollars. And I love those big breeze windows here. Now, this has a king bed from the factory. I do think you could still swap that mattress out. You might have to do a little shaving on a bed mat, uh, uh, a bed plank underneath that to size down to a queen. It might still be possible. I don't have confirmation of that at this time. What I do have confirmation of is the fact that that bed is easy lift and has some nice handy storage uh, right down below it. Now, across from the bed, where they, they differed from Rockwood a little bit here, Rockwood has like a, a closet that's double this size, but they don't have that extra window and they don't have the TV hookup straight across from the bed. Instead, what Rockwood does is they have a smaller window over here, TV hookup up there, and this is just closet space. So I guess I'm kind of curious, which way is the better way to go? More storage and, and, uh, and less windows or bigger windows and direct facing entertainment and less storage. Leave me a note, let me know. But when I said Cougar's new bathroom solved the problems that other manufacturers hadn't with this floor plan, I didn't mean just the rectangular shower. It also seriously improves the road mode. Because without even touching the slide, it might be a little bit of a sideways travel trailers two-step. 
but kind of like, you know, some motorhomes get a little tight when they close up too, but you can still use those as you're zipping down the road. Now, I don't think you should be in the RV zipping down the road in this thing like you do a motorhome, but the fact is, you can get from the front door to the back door to the, uh, the, the bed, the toilet, the refrigerator in the sink without ever touching the slide out. And this that we're looking at right here, that is a, an accomplishment that to my knowledge, no other builder of a floor plane like this has really knocked out of the park in the way that Cougar has right here. And I don't know if they were doing it on purpose or if it was just a Bob Ross happy accident um, after the, uh, the, the bathroom was changed around. But this is some of the best road mode I've ever seen in a 30 foot front kitchen rear bed slide trailer ever. Now, when we talk towing, it's a little bit of a tale of two cities because if you just glance at this, it's just under 30 feet, 29 feet, 11 inches. Nailed it on the length. 8,800 pounds GVW, not too bad. It kind of sounds a little bit half ton towably. But then we check out the hitch weight. And that's one of the catch 22s on a floor plan like this. When you start putting a big super slide on or in front the axles like this, the hitch weight starts to get hefty, 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 not wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. And um, that is where this one will probably blow a lot of half tons out of the water. So that's something that you're going to have to be really kind of conscious and aware of on this one. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times, chances are three quarter tons going to be the best towing recommendation that we have on here. Um, let's also talk, you know, good news, bad news. This floor plan has a lot of good news. They solved some problems, but in doing so, they created a couple others. Let's just be fair and real about this. I'd be Frank or Shirley or whoever you want me to be. It does not have a full front pass-through, but you do have this big kind of cargo bay that sort of goes under the kitchen counter. It's also where you're going to find things like your charge controllers, your nose lights, your solar disconnect, because you have separate disconnects for the solar and the batteries on this, and for good reason. If you're in long-term storage, um, you know, and you have some nice sunshine, it's nice to keep the solar uh, going on the batteries to, uh, you know, keep everything topped off. If you are, uh, however, um, pulling the batteries for like winter cold storage, you want to make sure you can shut the solar panels off as well. Handy little drunken uncle doggy leash latch up front there, and Cougar's still doing 30 pound tanks where most others are doing 20s, just giving you that greater capacity. Especially as a cold camp RV, having more propane and time between refills is a super, super handy thing. And that little guy right there, that is the Giggy Box. And what that's doing for us, basically, it's a battery disconnect on steroids, and you're watching tons of different manufacturers come up with their own versions of that now, because it's just, it vastly improves and cleans up the wiring on the front of these, and it eliminates a lot of failure points, and it is a hard, true, kills the battery disconnect uh, to avoid parasitic load off the battery that not everything does. Now, in this one, um, you've got your tankless on demand water heater right up front next to the kitchen so you get some hot water pretty quick here. It does mean there might be a little bit of a delay getting that hot water back to the shower so you want to kind of consider that. And this is also where you have a, uh, well I should probably open this up, just simple basic little docking center. This has things like your hot cold outside utility shower. There's a little hose that comes with it that you can hook up. Also things like, uh, you know, our uh, water hookup. So uh, you hook one hose up and you know, normally it's giving you city water function. Well, if you flip the little blue lever right there, what it'll actually do is it functions as a, uh, a power fill for your onboard holding tank. So you can maybe put some water in the tanks like, you know, before you uh, are, are leaving or just jumping over to your next destination. I will tell you though, the, the less water you carry in your tanks, frankly, the better. Manufacturers typically would like you to have zero in your tanks, mo most of them. Look at the awning coverage on this. I just tuned into that. Huge awning. And uh, they put stable steps on both entry doors. That's not something Cougar has really done in the past. Uh, a lot of times with Cougars, your front door gets the stable steps, but the uh, secondary doors do not. Now, because we don't have a full outside pass-through, I think they did something really smart and they were using their dipsticks, Jimmy. What looks like is going to be a camp kitchen door is actually just the back side of the roll open pantry tainment center. Now, if you do want a fridge out here, they do still run a power outlet for it. It almost looks like they went to install a camp kitchen and then later maybe removed it, especially when you consider that right down here, you still have your gas grill quick connect. So if you want to bring your own griddle, grill, whatever, you want to bring uh, a, a mini fridge, you can do that. Or you could use that space like 
Um, well, I was going to say like a like a outdoor available wastebasket, but I don't think you want to slide that pantry door open every time you want to just throw away a Snickers wrapper. So ignore what I was about to say. I now think that's stupid. Um, <laughs> Anyway, this is a, a change on Cougar Travel Trailers for 24. Auto leveling is no longer standard. Power stabilizers are still standard. Auto leveling is now available as an option, so it's still there, it's just not for standard. The underbelly that you can't really see from this vantage point, it is enclosed, it is forced air heated. Um, you have a radiant barrier going through it. All holding tanks have their own individual tank heaters and you actually have forced air heat, uh, not just in the belly, but onto each holding tank directly, which is very, very cool. Uh, Goodyear tires standard on these with that 87 mile an hour rating that nobody should ever be testing. I don't think you should be towing this trailer that fast. I think that's a recipe for disaster. Um, but And we are also TPMS prepped. And Cougar giving us a, uh, a rear receiver hitch for cargo and a rear bumper, which is cool, and a ladder to get us up to their fully blockable roof for maintenance purposes. Uh, also a handy place to be able to get up there to uh, look at that 220 watt solar package that's now standard on these. That's 10% bigger than last year with a, uh, a, a charge controller that's now twice as capable as it was factory standard last year with some optional solar packages. And on the back side here I got a bit of a problem. This RV has more storage. There's an extra baggage door over here. But in this display it's a little bit close, so, um, sorry hideout. It's, uh, not your time to shine today. We're gonna have to close you up. <laughs> I'll open it back up when I'm done. Pro probably. Now, if for some reason somebody forgets to open that slide back up, we have no idea how it got that way in the first place, right? Like, when you're, uh, when you work at a factory and something's broke when you show up, it's always like that at shift change. And it <laughs> anyway, um, you don't, again, have a full front pass-through, so all of your outside storage is very important. What I like here, though, is they created a separate outside storage area um, from the inside under the bed storage area. So, like, you don't have inside, outside stuff kind of uh, intermingling, you know, good way to get pink eye, maybe. But maybe you're new at this. Maybe you haven't seen all these other people that I've been talking about comparing uh, this floor plan to all this time. I'm going to leave you some links in the video description. First of all, to allow you to check for pricing and availability on one of these. If we have one of these in stock, it'll be on our website with pricing. If we're sold out, if you don't see anything on our website, contact our team. We'll certainly get you some figures on one. But um, I'll also leave you links to like Rockwood, Freedom Express, uh, who anybody else I can think of. Like Winnebago has uh, their own little front kitchen. There's several different variations of this concept right now that I've done videos on. I'll leave you links to them, any of them that I can think of. Let me know which one you'd go with and why. And short of that, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.